Well, this is Bishop R.J. Edwards, and it's indeed a pleasure to be back with you on this radio station. I know that you're going through your tests and your trials at this time when COVID-19, the master plague, is on the land. I want you to know that God will lift you up, turn your life around in spite of what we see. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Stay tuned as I go to church. We have been preaching the word of God. Go with me into the book of Exodus chapter 3. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And they looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh, neither put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is a holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now behold, therefore, the cry of the children of Israel have come unto me, and I therefore have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptian oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, he shall serve God upon this mountain. So here was Moses in a land called Midian. And here were the Midianites whose land Moses was living on. He married a girl over there and the father-in-law name was Jethro. And so it happened that while he was working for Jethro, remember he spent 40 years in Egypt as a prince. And then it was now at the end of another 40 years that he was in the land of Midian. Because God was getting ready to do something through his life. And so the Bible says at the end of that 40 years, God showed up in a burning bush. And to Moses, he never said that from the damn barn where the bush is on fire and it's not burned. I'm here to tell somebody that God is about to show up in some new ways. Some ways that we have never seen before. Some strange things are happening now. I said some strange things are happening in the world. Things that we never see happen yet. Because as for me, me never see virus like this named Corona. Me drive a car one time and named Corona. But me never hear about Corona virus. And me never see dust I come over from the Sahara and blanket the earth. Me never say Jamaica going to have an election and the United States of America going to have election. 
and it is in a time when they can't even campaign. Then there are strange things happening. But I'm here to tell somebody, said, amidst these strange things, there are some other things that God is going to be doing for his people that is going to cause some people to wander. I wonder if some of you are getting ready for the strange things. I'm going to tell you today that Moses was not prepared for this. What he saw, he was not prepared for that. What he saw, he was not ready for it. But God knew the readiness of his heart. God knew what was happening in his time that was so strange and God so Program it to happen to Moses. I'm here to tell somebody that there are some stuff that is programmed in these times that is going to bring a surprise to the church. A sense that God is about to do something different in these times. You remember when he passed by the place where there was a man who was sick for 38 years? At the pool at Bethesda. And the man when he was there. He never see this from the damn barn. He knows about water. Being troubled. And people going at a time. He can't move as fast as they can to jump in. So because of that. He steered the pool for 38 years. But one day. Somebody say one day. One day. The king of kings and the lord of lords. Show up where he was and when he showed up where he was he said let me show you something you take up your bed and start to walk i want you to understand that there is a, a new thing that is about to happen some new things that is about to happen in the earth and many of us are going to be amazed because of the new thing that is about to happen some of us here are going to be amazed. How many remember when Peter, James, and John was, was taken up to the mountain and Jesus wanted to show them something new? The Bible said he transfigured before them. And when he was transfigured before them, they started to see the real raw glory of God. Peter, James, and John never see that yet from the day they were born. They never see this kind of thing and Peter opened his big mouth and said Jesus let us build three tabernacles I want you to understand that there are some new things are about to happen on the face of the earth and you better get ready because God is in the mix of this coronavirus something is being set up something is being put in place for the church of Jesus Christ to be elevated now, the first thing I notice that God always do, he reach out to people who seems as though they are insignificant. Because some of you are thinking that you are insignificant and you can't be used by God. Moses knew nothing. Some of you don't know yet. But God has a plan for your life. The second thing about Moses, he was a shepherd boy. He was considered as a stranger in the land. A shepherd boy in the land of Midian. But God says, boy, come to the fire. I'm going to do something for you today that is going to marvel you. I don't know about your position or where you live or who is your mama or where your papa came from. Maybe it was a one night stand when, when you were conceived. Maybe it was in the back of a car. Or maybe it was in a hotel room where when you were conceived but I come by to tell somebody it doesn't matter who you are God says he has a surprise for you in this time of COVID there's going to be a breakthrough lift your hands and shout your hallelujah 
Don't you know? I've never heard of so many people sharing testimonies like in these times. It's like COVID has opened the floodgates that people who are not even having a job are getting houses in gated community. People who don't have a job, God opened doors for them and they're buying cars in 2020. God is talking to you. He says he has a plan for you that you don't even know that he has for you. I wonder if somebody is hearing me. The powers of hell is chasing after you woman. Oh the spirit of bondage wants to take over your life sir. Like hell don't like you. But hell don't like you. I don't like hell either. Come on you must not like hell. Tell hell to back off. You're a child of God. Let the spirit of hell understand that you were chosen for a time like this. Somebody open your mouth and shout a hallelujah. You were chosen for a time like this. understand of the time that Moses had experienced. The first 40 years, he was a prince in Egypt eating from the king's table, seated on the king's furniture, eating from golden plates and golden knife and fork. But something happened in his life which it seems as though it was a demotion because he killed somebody. There was a, a frightening experience. Some you're having some frightening experience but out of those frightening experience God is about to propel you he's about to shift there's a shift that is taking place in your life and God says to tell you don't be afraid of that frightening position he's shifting you because he has a purpose for your life woman I'm seeing a frightening situation you never see this yet Moses has never committed murder as a prince everything was all right but then all of a sudden a shift came in his life it looks like a demotion but God says to tell you that he's preparing you for a promotion it looks sad it looks bad you have a job yesterday and today you have no job you got nice furniture yesterday and today you have nothing you got money yesterday but today you got nothing I can imagine that Moses lost his friends he lost his family oh but praise God God has a plan can I talk to somebody on today I'm here to tell you in radio your land that God has a plan for you. It smells bad today. It feels bad today. It looks bad today. But your head is anointed with oil. Remember how Moses got to the place of the palace. It was by the brink of the river Jordan where his mother placed him in a basket and God providential care kept him until he got into the king's house. Well it's the same God that is with you yesterday. It's the same God that will be with you on today. Can I tell somebody that no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that is risen up against you and judgment is going to be condemned. Put your hand over your head. Somebody in your bedroom. You're covered, covered, covered from witchcraft. Covered from the powers of hell. The powers of darkness has no dominion, no authority. Somebody open your mouth and shout up a hallelujah. There's a glory and there's in the house. It looks like you got to the end of your rope. It feels like you cannot make it anymore. You can't take the situations. It looks bad now. But God says to tell you, hold on, sister. Hold on, my brother. Press along, saints. Press along in God's own way. Persecution, you must bear. Trials and crosses in the way. But the heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my strength. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my present helper in the time. 
times of trouble. Can I tell you, the eyes of God is upon you. Come on, slap somebody and tell them, so the eyes of God is upon you. God's eyes have not been shut. Look like you can't make it, sister. My brother, it seems like you're at the end of your rope. But God said, tie a knot. You're not going to drop. Yes, it looks like life is battering you. But there's a time when you're going to batter life. There's a time when you're going to stand over your situation and laugh. And say, the man that laughed last, I him laugh the best. How it feels to be a prince 40 years ago. And for the next 40 years, you become a servant boy, a shepherd boy. How does it feel to see the shift in your position? I'm talking to somebody here. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The important thing is that God's eyes are over you. The presence of God. That's why I can't do without coming to church, you know. Because sometimes I feel like we can make it, you know. But anytime I come into the house of God. And I can feel the current of the Holy Ghost that shift me. Lift me up and turn my life around. Fill my heart with joy. And I leave church shouting my hallelujah. When I go home, it feels different because... I have an encounter with the almighty God. Some of you have some menial jobs. You're tired of looking pay on I get. Because sometimes when you look and look at money and think of the bills. You say God I will go on in my life. But it soon be over. A shift is coming in your direction. God is around to turn your sorrow into dancing. He's about to fix you until you're fixed. He knows your end from the beginning. And he's about to direct the end of your life. Moses! Moses. The man turned around. And when he looked, he saw a fire that burns. I'm glad how God appeared to him by fire. Everybody said fire. fire. I mean like a church that is on fire. Because when you see fire... Fire means that something new are going to happen. Fire comes. If I want to eat a cake or a pudding, I have to light fire. Come on, the stove has to be 360 degrees. And anytime the stove gets so hot and you put the grated potato with all the ingredients in there, all of a sudden when the pudding come out, it turns brown and nice and ready to eat fire got a hold of it some of you right now you're experiencing fire but it's all because a change is coming to your life the holy ghost is in the church the holy ghost speaks of fire i don't like no dead church no no lukewarm church you must come into the church and feel like fire shut up in your bones when god was about to select jeremiah and Jeremiah felt something running in his body. Jeremiah said, I feel like fire. Some of you must feel fire in your hands. Fire in your feet. Fire in your head. Fire in your eyes. Fire. Some of you must leave church shaking your hand. And say, fire for my enemies. You think you come at church just to show your shoes and your suit. You come at church because you want a deliverance. You come at church because you want God to set you free. I'm tired of them sparse church. That's cool and dead. My sister, I'm tired of us going to sit in seats that are padded and leave church cool. Sick and anemic. When you leave church, you must leave on fire. Go home and release fire. Fire in your house. Fire against every demon. Fire against every spirit. Every bondage. Some on the leave on the house. Hella broke loose. Demons want to take over your yard. Demons want to live in your bedroom. Demons want to take over your dining table. Demons want to stop you from eating. But in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that you shall not die. 
You're leaving church with the glory. You're leaving church with the fire. You're leaving church with the anointing. Somebody open your mouth up and shout your praise. I said something is about to pray. Can't forget brother Michael. Came here walking like a cripple man. One in one business. And when I saw the man coming in like a zombie. All I wanted to happen is that the glory break loose in the church. Fire of God must break loose in the church. That's why some are in this church playing church. When the fire start burn, something must happen to you. Every chain, every bondage, every stronghold that they put over your life. Them chains must be broken. Break every chain, God. Break every bondage, God. Shut down the wicked spirits from the pit of hell. Every assignment, every power from the spirit of hell must be shut down. Come on, lift your hands right now. Shut it down in your yard. Shut it down in your bedroom. Shut it down. Don't you see? After the fire came in this church, her brother Michael came back walking good. Start back in business again. Why? Because glory hit him. Fire hit him. Oh, God, I feel like something is about to break. Lift your hands and shout. Your hallelujah. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Shout your hallelujah. Something is breaking around here. Demonic forces from the pit of hell is dropping off right now. Chains are falling off. Lift your hands and praise God. So, the call of Moses. The man was a stranger to this kind of call. Some of you right now, the Lord is calling you. I said the Lord is calling you. I feel the glory of God while you're experiencing the flame. Moses! Turn around and say, let me examine this. The first thing he heard. Moses! Moses, take off the shoes from off your feet. Because where you're standing is holy ground. The shoes taken off his feet speaks of his time for a promotion. Speaks of an encounter with the true and living God. No wonder why some of you when you come to church, you got to give your heart to God. Some of you when you come to church and feel this kind of anointing, you must surrender your life to God. Some of you at your home right now, God, I call you a long time. The hands of God is over you long time. There's a troubling of the water. Where your is right now, there's a troubling. Lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Trouble me one more time. God is stirring a mighty revival across the nation. Join us on Facebook and on Zoom every morning at 6 a.m. as Christians across Jamaica and the world pray for this mighty revival. Call 876-437-9664. That's 876-437-9664. Or visit the Bishop Ruan Edwards Ministry Facebook page. The Lord gave me a vision, and I need your help. God is calling for a mighty, mighty revival on the island. And he's saying that I need to get a truck, an evangelism truck, with all the equipment, all the speaker boxes, the amplifiers, the drum sets. He tells me that I need to get bright lights on it, with projector and camera and everything to touch this nation. I need you to help me. I need seven of these trucks because there are many pastors who are having difficulties now pitching tents. We need to put these trucks on almost every street in the communities across the nation. I need to get the first one. I need you to help me. If I can find 300 persons, who will send me at least 20,000 or 10,000 
or whatever you can afford to help me to get this truck, I would be very happy. God is calling for a mighty revival. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for it. Would you help me to get this truck, please? Those of you who are listening to this program in the morning times, if this program has been a blessing to you, call my number, please. I need you to send me your love offering to get this truck. You're going to be proud to see this evangelism truck with all the equipment on it. All we need to do is park it on the street and preach the gospel. Seven of these trucks are needed to go through this island. Help me to get the first one. To make your pledge towards that evangelism truck, call or text me right now at 378-0382. 378-0382. Let me repeat for you. 378-0382. Call me to make a pledge towards the truck. Put 876 in front of that number. Have a great day. This is Bishop R.J. Edwards, and I'm here to let you know that God is doing a new thing at our fasting and prayer service here in Spanish Town. Every Wednesday, the power of God in operation. Are you sick? Are you oppressed? Do you want God's deliverance? Are you hungering for a breakthrough in your life? I am inviting you to join us this Wednesday. Our fasting service at the train station commences at 9 a.m. Come to the last bus stop in Spanish Town. Ask for the train station. Come on in. Experience the raw glory of God. Join the praise and worship beginning at 9 o'clock and watch God deliver you. Please also note that you could go on Facebook every morning at 6 o'clock. I pray for people every morning 6 a.m. on Facebook. My Facebook page is Bishop Rowan Edwards Ministry. Bishop R-O-W-A-N Ministry. Come on out. Join me every morning, 6 a.m. for prayer. When you do, God will deliver you. 6 a.m. every morning on Facebook. God bless you. Bishop R.J. Edwards tuning out, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you on Love FM at 10.30 this night. Look forward to see you. Have a good night. Bishop Edwards saying goodbye.